Hi everybody, it's Lori with Reiki and Wellness, broadcasting from my healing space today for Wellness Wednesday. And we're going to continue our Reiki Level 2 techniques as well as discuss how to um, align yourself better with the universal energies and build trust in the si signals you're getting from the universe. So... Um, I think the spiritual path is a trusting path. Like you have to learn to trust the universe and get yourself into alignment and harmony with the universe. And um, so we're going to talk about how to do that, um, especially as you evolve and grow in your spiritual practices. So before we get into that, we're going to go ahead with our Reiki cleansing techniques. And um, first we're going to start with the Palo Santo. We're going to go ahead and cleanse our energy field or our auric field. <sighs> feels good. It feels refreshing and grounding all at the same time. So if you do this on a client, just kind of do every part of their body. You can even do under the arms and under the feet. And again, make sure they're not allergic to anything that you're using. So you want to ask um, if they have any allergies prior to using anything like this on them. You can also use sound to clear um, energy and the drum is really good as well as the singing bowl or like rattles. There's different instruments you can use, but pretty much anything that produces sound will clear energy too. So I'm gonna get my feet. And then we're going to spray ourselves with an energy cleansing spray. This is um, Florida water again. So before you practice on anybody else, you really, really want to make sure your energy is clear. And you also want to clear your energy after you practice on them. So we don't do that as much in the video. But after you practice on somebody, you want to, again, clear your energy field. Because you may pick up on things unintentionally. And, um, you know, taking a good shower afterwards is helpful, too. And then we're going to use our essential oils. Tonight we're going to use clove oil. And then lemon and eucalyptus oil. So this is a very strong combination of oils, but I'm feeling like I want to clear a lot of energy today, so that's what we're going to use. And again, as a Reiki 2 practitioner, if you're working on someone else, it's always important to clear your own energy, get your own energy in a good state before you start working on someone else. That's just good um, energy hygiene. And then you want to um, go ahead and you know, work on their energy field and clear anything for them. You will clear their energy as you're working on them too, so just keep that in mind. So I like to keep the essential oils on my hands as I'm working on the client. Um, you can wipe them off a little bit if they get to be too pungent, you know, so keep a towel by you. And then we want to just go ahead and open up our own energy field. And if you're doing this for somebody else, you do it for them too. We're going to um, envision the Shoku Ray symbol. So the Shoku Ray, just want to kind of imagine that. You can put it in your hands. This is the activating symbol, and this is used to like open up the auric field. I like to start at somebody's head, usually, and open up the energy field at the crown chakra. I will sometimes start at someone's feet. So like depending on where my intuition is guiding me, I might start at their feet. But typically I start at the head and I open up the head first. And to me like this is a really um, great place to start. And then you kind of work your way down 
the front of them and then all the way to the feet. However, some people, you feel a tug towards going toward their feet, just go with your intuition. So you always wanna use your intuition as your guidance system. You don't wanna just go through the motions, right? So I am really big on tuning into your intuition and using that to guide the Reiki rather than all the techniques and practices and this and that. So once you get good at it, once you get comfortable with it, you'll know and your intuition will guide you where you need to go, okay? So I open up my crown chakra and then we call in universal life force energies, divine light and divine love. So I say divine light is doing its perfect work in and through me now. Divine light is doing its perfect work in and through us now. Divine light is doing its perfect work in and through us now. Then we say divine love and I like to go to the heart space. Divine love is doing its perfect work in and through me now. Divine love is doing its perfect work in and through us now. Divine love is doing its perfect work in and through us now. And then I like to bring universal life force energy in through every chakra. So just imagine it flowing through every chakra down the center of your body into the earth and into the ground. Okay, so calling on universal life force energy to guide the Reiki today. Please cleanse and clear my own energy field so I am a pure channel of the Reiki healing energy. And then you can just kind of intend, say a prayer, please um, help me work with the highest and greatest spirits, the highest and greatest energy for the good of everyone involved for the highest good of my client, for the highest good of me, you know, and you can just kind of like formulate a little intention or a prayer. So you want to go into gasho position or prayer position and ask for guidance and ask for the energy to flow through you for their highest benefit. And I'm smelling the oil, so I'm breathing that in. Okay. So then we want to run it through our energy field. And then you start at somebody's head and you just start holding your hands at their head and start allowing the energy to flow through your hands. So if you have to generate the energy between your hands to build it, you can. Once you're activated to the symbols, it pretty much the gasho position will activate your hands, but you can do it however you want. I always like to, to do a warm up and then I go over to the chakras. Then we start at the head. So if you're a good empath, you're going to feel some of this in your own body, right? So different um, practitioners have different skills and talents and abilities, but if you're an empath, you might actually feel everything in your client's body in your own body. So that's how I learned about my own empathy skills as um, when I started doing Reiki on other people, I would feel like if they had a headache, I'm like, do you have a headache? Because suddenly like my head would hurt. Or how are your sinuses right now? Because suddenly my sinuses didn't feel good. Or how's, are you having issues with your throat? You know, and like I would go over all their chakras and all over their body, even their arms. I'm like, have you had an injury on your shoulder? Because like then my shoulder would hurt. So every place that I directed the energy, I would feel their issues in my own body. So that's why we also want to clear and cleanse our energy after we work on somebody. Because if you're that much of an empath, then you're going to, you, some of it might kind of absorb into you. So you definitely want to take care of your energy field after you've worked on somebody. Um, but for me, it's just information, right? So like I just use it to inform me about what they need the most healing on, right? So if I'm feeling it directly in my own body, then I know, oh, I need to spend a little more time on their shoulder or I need to spend a little more time on their throat chakra. And I can feel in my own body when the energy has moved in their body. So that's also like a big signal. Not everybody has this experience though. So you just have to trust that the symbols are working, trust that the energy is working and really try to tune into at least some kind of sensation that you're getting off your hands or in your own body. Like maybe your body is sending you little tingles or something else 
to signal like the energy has moved and it's time to go to the next chakra or the next area on the body, right? So for me, it's like I can just feel it in my own body and then I know like when something's moved because it feels like it moved in my own body. So that's um, particular to me, but other empaths and other healers have that, that going on too. So it's nothing to be alarmed about, but it's definitely something you want to take care of too. Because once you move the energy and you release it, so I release a lot through my breath, so I'll breathe it out. Right? So then now it's not in my body anymore. It's been released. I will release it through breaking up the connection. So you can break up the connection after you move the energy. You can simply sweep it away. You can shake your hands and send it down to the ground and you, you know, thank the earth for receiving the energy. Things like that, but you definitely don't want to hold on to someone else's energy or obviously their issues and their pain and their blocks and all of that. So it's really important to move the energy, breathe through it, release it. You know, if you feel like you need more insurance, do more cleansing techniques, um, things like that to move the energy and to clear you of that energy as well. So it's nothing to be afraid of. It just has to get moved. Um, but anyway, that's how it works for me as an empath like I actually feel what they are experiencing <laughs> so it's pretty intense actually sometimes so that's what I say you receive as much Reiki as you're giving because you're now in their energy field and then if you're an empath you're actually even more connected to the energy field so it's like you're receiving the same healing that they are um <sighs> so we're just gonna go ahead and just give ourselves like a little a little Reiki right now. Breathe it out. I feel my feet grounding more to the ground as I do this. And then we're going to work with a few symbols and talk about um, how to build more trust with the universe and our spiritual path. Because as a Reiki practitioner, as a spiritual person, or anyone really who starts to follow their spiritual path, when you start following your spiritual path, it's really a path of building trust with the universe, building trust in your own intuition, building trust in your own psychic impressions. Like you're, it's a whole um, lesson in trust, right? So you're trusting that you're going along the right path. You're trusting that you understand what you are feeling. You, um, it's like you're learning how to trust a whole new system of knowledge and wisdom, but it's all like, you know, maybe nonverbal. It's not something you can really pick up in a textbook. It's something you have to learn to work with and learn to trust. So there's like our big picture, the outer life where we're learning to trust like the path we're walking and our spiritual truth and our spiritual path and our um, reason for living really like the reason we came to earth the reason we're in you know we are here what we're here to do our mission our purpose um, so we're learning to trust in that and we're looking for symbols on the outside of our life to reflect back to us that we're on the right path so I found that over time, like whenever I would get like little symbols or little like nudges or um, different things, it would just always build reassurance within me that I'm doing the right thing, I'm going in the right direction, I'm on the right path, right? So intuition is usually pretty subtle. If you're having like freak outs about things, that tends to be like some paranoia or some old trauma coming up. But definitely you want to go with your gut feeling. If something doesn't feel right, then, you know, you got to learn to trust that, right? So you don't want to just do things blindly or um, head in a direction blindly. So I do like a few things that give me extra insurance that what I'm doing is the right thing. So I will look for symbols like out in nature. So I'll get like little feathers or something. Um, that indicates to me like things are good, we're on the right path. I will find like number sequences adding up, like, you know, the same numbers like three times or whatever. So five, 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 one, 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 
things like that. So that's always like a message to me that I'm on the right path. Things are good. We're going the right way. Um, I consult like oracle cards. I check in with my spirit guides through oracle cards. I sit in meditation and I have conversations with my spirit team and ask for guidance. I always ask for guidance in every, pretty much everything I do just because like I know like I'm living a spiritual, you know, mission and a spiritual path and a spiritual life and I don't want to mess up too much, right? So I'm trying to stay on the path and there's a lot of distractions <laughs> that'll pull you off the path. So I'm always tuning into spiritual guidance and asking for guidance. So I ask for guidance all the time. I ask for, for protection all the time because I want to stay on my path. I don't want to be distracted. I don't want to be pulled off. I don't want to zig when I should have zagged, right? So I'm always looking for the universe to give me reassurance and give me clues and, you know, and it's like a little game that I play with the universe, but it's helpful to build trust in the spiritual path and your spiritual purpose and and know that what you're doing is right for you, right? So not everyone can tell you what's right for you. It's it's an internal thing, right? So um, I've definitely done things that weren't right. And I was like, ah, oh, now I got to like undo what I just did and go this other way because that's the way I should have went in the first place, right? So it's not that you can't integrate the things that weren't right or they weren't useful, but like really... To simplify your life, you want to look for these signs and symbols and get into communication with the universe, into communication with your spirit guides, into communication with, you know, your internal GPS system because that will save you time and effort and mistakes, right? So the more you get tuned into yourself, into your own spiritual guidance, the more your path should flow, right? So you really kind of avoid all these pitfalls if you can get like locked in. Um, it's also important in Reiki practice to be tuned into your internal guidance system because you're going to use that when you're practicing Reiki on other people. So, I mean, I found Reiki basically to be a reflection of my own intuition and helps me like like even when I doubt what I'm experiencing or sensing or feeling, I'll ask the, the client, I'm like, is this going on for you? Or do you have, the, you know, what is going on with this? Does this make sense to you? And they'll always, re they'll always affirm it. And I'm like, wow, that was the weirdest thing that like was coming into me. But because I can have a dialogue with them, I get instant feedback, right? So you're going to use your intuition and Reiki a lot. And the more you do Reiki, the more psychic you become and you'll receive all these psychic impressions that will, you know, give more wholeness to the energy picture for your client, right? So when you're tuning into like blocks in certain areas and then you receive a psychic impression about like how it started or what it's related to, and then you have a dialogue, then you're kind of becoming like a counselor to them about this issue, right? So all of our issues stem from like an emotional situation. So emotions settle into our body. They don't leave us, right? So unless we release the emotions in healthy ways, anything that doesn't get um, released gets trapped. And then you tune into the trapped, stuck energy when you're doing Reiki. And if you can use your intuition to guide you, and if it can inform the healing work, then it's just a better experience for your client. And it's, you know, reaffirming for you about like your intuition is on point, right? So you're learning to trust the universe in every single facet of your whole life once you start walking this path and once you get into the Reiki um, practices and you start facilitating Reiki for other people. So you can use it for yourself, but it's really more informative to use it with other people because you get more feedback and you, you, know, you start to understand yourself better, you understand your skills better, and it just leads you further and further onto the path, right? So those are some ideas. Today we're just going to go ahead and use a little bit of um, Reiki 2 symbols to help us like build more trust in ourselves and into our guidance. So we're going to just go ahead and visualize 
and maybe like intend say a prayer that to our guides to our higher self that we would like more clues more um, indicators that we're on the right path and more intuition about how to get more into alignment with our path and our intuition and our own inner knowing so we can intend for that so just go ahead and visualize and talk to your guides for a little bit and say thank you for all the help that you do give because the universe is always trying to talk to us. We just have to get like more open to receiving the information because it's always out there. It's always, the universe is always guiding us. We just, it's important for us to get the messages though, right? It's, it does nothing if they, if the messages aren't received. So we're gonna use the say hey key symbol We're just going to visualize it coming through us. And this creates balance and harmony. I actually feel the energy as I'm bringing it down. So it creates balance and harmony. And it just helps you to like kind of clear anything that's out of balance and out of harmony. Because if you're out of balance, then you're less likely to tune into yourself. So just see this symbol. So connecting to that. And then we're going to use the distance symbol right now to send to any aspects of ourselves that are out of harmony, right? So we want to send healing energy to any aspect of ourself that doesn't feel integrated, that feels out of harmony, that's out of balance. And we want to intend and invite balance to come back into us. You can just visualize the whole symbol and then just invite it to come into your energy field. You can start at your crown chakra and bring it down. And it's a big symbol. I do have the videos on my short video tab on YouTube so you can check these out again. Um, and I have them set up so you can get attuned to them as well. So these symbols can be used for different things. So you just want to like visualize them. You can see them larger. Your energy field is actually a few feet away from you. So you can make the symbol as large as you want and just have it like filtering through your whole auric field, your whole energy field. <clears throat> and we're just going to go ahead and wrap this up and say thank you for the beautiful energy. Thank you for guiding us and thank you for helping to keep us on the path. And we'll wrap up our energy. When I finish on a client, I always add the infinity symbol over them to hold the energy in place and to have it still like activated and working within them. And then we want to break our connection if we're working on somebody else. If we're working on ourselves, I don't think we need to do that. But um, just enjoy this beautiful energy, this beautiful Reiki. And I wish you well. I hope you have a great week. And I hope you get more signs and symbols or you're more tuned into them from the universe. That you're doing well and you're on the right path. And um, look for ways that you receive the guidance and kind of start getting into harmony with that. Okay?